My name is Julia, this is Joe, this is our dog Taika, and this is our recently converted van called Sandy. Sandy is a 06 medium wheelbase mid-roof sprinter and today we're going to go on a van tour so you can check out what our little home looks like. So this is our kitchen, this is a recycled bench top that we've cut to fit this kitchen area. We've made this extra bit of bench top that you can use for cutting um, anything that you'd need in a normal kitchen. We've got sink with hot and cold water. Um, we've also got a gas stove with two burners. And we've got this splash cover that we've made from these tiles we found from a small shop in Melbourne. Then we've just got storage bears like you would in a normal kitchen, just in a lot smaller, um, lot narrow, more narrow space. Uh, we've just got a little cleaning cupboard, just some um, plates, um, tea towels, anything you'd really need, cutlery, um, some dry food. We've got a rubbish bin over here. This is currently our um, dog, <laughs> dog cupboard, but we wanted a big um, spot for um, storage, really whenever, wherever we could fit it. Um, we wanted something visual as well for the kitchen, something that would make it a little bit more homely. So we decided on this, um, this little shelf. We had seen similar ones on other people's vans, but um, it took a lot of measuring to to get it right and to find jars that won't fall down and that you can still get off. So it's just home for our dry food, some spices, something that adds a little bit of colour um, into the kitchen. Um, then we've got this. This is one of our most creative inventions for this van, I guess. The area above the driver's seat was pretty high and we're pretty short people. So we thought that's dead space that we could use. So this is a little overhead storage that's currently just home for our dog bed <laughs> but you can fit a lot of blankets, duets, anything really, pillows um, there for longer trips. We wanted some guiding principle throughout the conversion which was that we would try to use as much recycling materials as we can. We had read a lot about other people's conversions from YouTube, from Instagram. Every time we'd watch people's videos, it felt like, oh my God, they've spent so much money on it. This is like money that we don't really want to use, which some of which we don't have. <laughs> you would be amazed on what people want to get rid of and what people don't have use for anymore. If you sort of apply a little bit more effort, you know, go a little bit slower and don't necessarily have to, you know, walk into your local hardware store or Bunnings and just get everything off the shelf. So it was pretty much done within like nine months and then all the finishing touches, it was a year. So I'd say like, yeah, a good year working on it part-time. So this is um, still half of our kitchen, <laughs> but it's also our living room and it's also our bedroom. These two drawers are mainly just for clothes, things like that. On top of that, it's our bed and also our dining table. So it's kind of our dining room as well, which pops out like this. So this can actually host um, really almost six people if you put two chairs here. And then on top of that, we've got our bed. We're so short that this is actually um, kind of rare to have a bed this way in a van. We haven't really seen any of them really because most people just won't fit, but we actually just fit. So it creates us a little bit of extra space. Under the bed, um, wanted to include as much storage again as possible. Wanted to include a little visual element, which is um, a little bookshelf or a nook over here, um, just for little things like keys or books. It's just currently books. Then over here, we've got storage as well. We made it to fit the wheel arc to get as much storage as possible. Joe, Joe really carefully built this, this drawer. And, and on the other side, under our couch, is actually our fridge. So um, this is our, Waco um, box fridge. Um, you can also turn it into a freezer. It's currently it's a fridge um, and it runs off our solar panels. And then here, a small set of storage as well. Kind of what we use it for really changes where we're going, depending on where we're going. We just really needed extra light. We found this caravan window for $20 um, off uh, just a junkyard, um, just an old caravan window. And we decided we really want to put it in. That was the first thing we did actually a year ago. Um, so we cut it in. <laughs> it's very stressful cutting a hole <laughs> into your van <laughs> that you just bought. It worked out okay and it just creates a lot more extra light. So it actually feels a lot more like a room and not just a box with four, four walls. So, so we're really happy how it turned out. We're not living in our van full time. 
We did build it in the kind of mindset that it's just going to be a way to travel. It's definitely suitable for living in full time, but at the moment it's our kind of like, it's like our airplane, bus, and yeah, a little like, escape pod. <laughs> yeah, in the same one, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just gives you a huge sense of autonomy and freedom, and saves a lot of your time. Uh, so this is the this is the rear of Sandy. This is the the garage, as we like to call it. So we'll pop the barn doors open and have a look inside. These doors pop open to sort of ninety degrees, like so and then you can unclip them and go all the way around. Like that. The two drawers that we found on the side of the road, um, this barn door was with them as well. So we wanted to repurpose that and upcycle it, you know, as much as possible. And that pops open to sort of reveal our little garage storage space underneath. So this is our gas box here, and this is our outdoor shower. So. Um, with a little outdoor hot water unit out around the back there. And that just pops open like so. And if we just flip the water on like that, you can see that that hooks up there and it's a great little spot to, you know, wash off after you surf and whatnot. So yeah, you can really, you can really have a nice warm shower. It's really good. So we've, we timber clad all the back doors and whatnot and, and stain them so the theme sort of looks pretty similar. And we've um, included this little slide out addition. So this is our, um, it functions a couple of, couple of use cases. It's got the main feature, which is the sort of outdoor couch feature. So that folds up like so. And then you can sort of, you know, hop on and relax and sort of, you know, enjoy the sunset or whatever. With our, with our gas box, we've got a, a, a bayonet on the outside, so like an external plug-in. So if we get the barbecue, we can, you know, close this down and then put the barbecue on top and do a bit of an outdoor cook-up sort of thing. Yeah, and so from the outside, we, we wanted to try and create, you know, a bit, of, a bit of passive design. So that's why we put the window on the passenger side in Australia. So we, you know, driver sits on the right side and passenger side is the left. So, <clears throat> so yeah, and that means that if it's really sunny, we can put our, our awning, which is up the top. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but it's up the top there and that extends out. And that means we can keep, you know, the sun on that, on that driver's side and then keep that passenger side all shaded as our little, our little camp spot. And I guess lastly on top, we've got the, uh, the sun deck. So we cladded that all, <coughs> cladded that all off in some, some nice decking timber and that's our yeah, that's our little spot if you want to go climb up and get a bit of sun and relax and light out. So we'll go through our electrical setup. Um, Sandy is fully off the grid and she's, um, she's powered by 300 watts of solar that sit on the roof. And she's got a second battery, so that feeds basically, basically everything in the van that has electricity. This is our sort of control panel and these are these sort of custom built light switches that we made. With, uh, with dimmers on them, so you can sort of set the tone of the light you're looking for. And we've got our Victron battery monitor, which basically goes through and just gives us all the information about our electrical system, what we're using, how full the battery is. And uh, yeah, and this is our little retro DC voltmeter, which is kind of cool. Our battery also powers our, um, <coughs> our little ignition for the diesel heater that we have. So this control here, um, basically turns the diesel heater on and that's, you know, a few clicks of a button, we'll have some, some hot air coming out of here. You know, the first couple of nights that we put it in, we were like, so happy that we did because, you know, it gets this place, you know, up to sort of 23, 24, 25 degrees in like five minutes. And yeah, it's really, really warm and really, really toasty. I'll just show you quickly the, um, where the tank lives for that. So that's the diesel tank for the diesel heater and the diesel heater lives under the front seat. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> lastly, we've got our max air fan and that's been really, really cool and really good to use when we're cooking and stuff. It gets all the cooking smells and fumes out and you know, once you open the side window, you get a real nice cross airflow, which is really cool. And we've also got a little charging station that lives near our bed. So yeah, we're pretty comfortable and yeah, it's all, it's all very sustainable and off the grid, so we couldn't be happier.
it's definitely a work in progress all the time. I think that's the biggest takeaway we took from building a van is that it's never really ready. Because it's a place that adapts depending on what you do with it, where you go, what sort of climate you go in. It's already changed so much from what we thought. It's definitely a lot more fluid and changing than a normal house.